welcome to this new episode of Scientix TV. Today we have a very special episode. It's 100% science in action. And for that, we have our very special Isidora. Very happy to be here, Agueda. Thank you for having me. So an episode all about experiments. What does that mean, Isidora? So we'll host Scientix ambassadors that have shared their experiments through the form in the description of the video. So make sure to keep sharing your experiments with us using the same form. Also, Agueda, I will uh, guide you through an experiment today. Okay, so I hope that doesn't end up in the bloopers that we're going to be sharing at the end of this episode. Uh, first, we'll start with Michael Gregory, a familiar Scientix ambassador uh, that will share an experiment about gummy bears and osmosis. Hi, it's great to be back on Scientix TV. Today I have an experiment that I learned uh, last year when I was in Mexico where I presented at the Scientix conference. This one's on osmosis and it prominently features gummy candies. And for osmosis, of course, we need some water. And then we need something with less water in it. So I'm going to be using rubbing alcohol here, which is about 90% alcohol. And to round things out, just some glasses to put things in and some millimeter paper so we'll be able to see our results. So now here's the setup seen from above. Uh, osmosis is a process uh, that deals with different water concentrations. So here I've got pure tap water, which is almost 100% water, like in the 90 something high uh, percent. And here I've got rubbing alcohol, which only has about 10% water. So it's mainly something other than water, which is the key part. So three gummy bears that are each about pretty close to 30 millimeters, I'd say about 29 millimeters. I'm going to take two of them that are the same, put one in the tap water, one in the ethanol, and then leave them to sit for a couple minutes. As they sit through the process of osmosis, the one in the water should start absorbing water, and the one in the ethanol solution should start giving away water. So we should see this one start to get bigger and this one start to get smaller. Now we need to wait for a couple minutes. Now a couple minutes later, let's see what happened. Remember this one was in the tap water, this one was in the ethanol solution, and this one was left outside as our control. So taking it out, it's a little bit slippery and difficult to take out. Uh, we can see it looks swollen and bigger than before. In the ethanol, it looks about the same as before, maybe slightly, slightly smaller. And the reason why this happens, so osmosis is when water tries to arrive at the same concentration in two different areas. In the water, the water concentration outside of the gummy bear is greater than the water concentration inside. So water will flow into the gummy bear making it swell and take on water. From the ethanol solution, the water concentration was lower in the solution than in the gummy bear, so it drew water out and it should shrink. We'll compare those to the control. So we see in the water, it's gone up to 32 millimeters or so, we can see on that graph paper there. In the ethanol, it's about 29 millimeters, which was about where we started. And the control, that's also at 29 millimeters. So in the end, we didn't leave it long enough to see a significant change for the one that was in the ethanol. It stayed about the same, but we definitely saw the one in the water took on water, showing that osmosis led to water being gained by that, uh, by that gummy bear. I love this one as a fun introduction to osmosis that's accessible even for younger kids. Of course, for some of the older kids, you you want to use actual cells or membranes to uh, show more advanced principles of it, maybe use different concentrations of water or different concentrations of sugar or salts or uh, other solutes. Uh, but this one is a great one you can pull out at science fairs or uh, doing things to make science more accessible to more people, uh, which is one of my favorite parts of science. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you try this out yourselves. What an interesting experiment. What do you think, Agueda? Where did you get that? You want one? Thank you. So the experiment that we're going to show today is suggested by Aida Petroska, a physics teacher, and she submitted the experiment using the form. 
uh, this experiment introduces the acid-base reactions for students. And for this experiment, you will need uh, alcohol vinegar, some baking soda, a small bottle, but make sure that the neck is narrow so you can actually put a balloon over it. And we will need some balloons and a funnel. If you don't have one, you can make it with the paper, which is how we're going to use today. Of course, we need a plate to keep the mess away and the safety goggles because the funnest fun is the safest fun. But before we go on this experiment, we're gonna check our second educator's uh, video from Julia Raldon, who's telling us about orogenesis and or how mountains are built. Hi, uh, Scientix TV and Julia Riadon, and presenting you an experiment called the Himalayas in 30 seconds. This experiment aims to modelize orogenesis, the building of mountains, and uh, how are they formed and how they contain fossils sometimes. So, have you ever seen a fossil like this? A tiny marine animal, a shrimp, uh, buried in the rock, found on a mountain. A mountain that display uh, folds and folds due to tectonic forces. Okay, let us build this experiment. The model is easy to prepare at home or in the classroom with a chocolate box and a piece of plywood or cardboard that fits in the shorter side of the box. Then we will build our sediments by means of uh, uh, material, easy materials like sand. I deposit a model layer of sediments made of sand, real sand found on the seashore. Then I deposit a second layer of a finer sediments made of flour, a common ingredient of food, easy to find in any kitchen. the plate tectonics came in with, uh, say, in this model, the Indian plate that uh, pushes towards the Eurasian plate. As it really happens, some uh, 60, 50 million of years ago. Here is the tectonic plate uh, moving the Indian place pushing towards the Eurasian place and see the horizontal layer become folded and we can also we can also see some falls sometimes and our marine sediments comes up high on the sea level. Okay and if there's an earthquake drop Cover and hold. Okay, come out. Tell me what we're doing. So, to start the experiment, we will put white vinegar in the water bottle. So you put around three quarters of a, of a bottle. Well, should be enough. What about our go-go? Oh, yes. I got it. Thank you, Ageda, for the reminder. So then we're going to add two tablespoons of baking soda into the balloon. But first, let's demonstrate how not to cut straight and cut the paper so we can create a small funnel for our box, for our balloon. Oops. 
it's not working. <laughs> okay. Well, I might need your help with this, but let's see. And that's why you need to cut it. <laughs> and two. Oh, a For bit those more. of you like me that don't know how to cut straight with your scissors. Okay. So, did you how much did you throw again? Two tablespoons. You can add a bit more, just to have a better reaction. Oh dear. Okay, then you fit the balloon onto the bottle, like this. Make sure to hold it tight before you turn it away. And turn, and watch the reaction happen. Oh my God. I can't. I am afraid. <laughs> Problem. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> danger, danger. <laughs> my challenge, I'm <laughs> Well, it should be fine as long as you're holding it tight. Okay, cool. So, what we see, in, see is happening is an acid-base reaction. So, baking soda is a base and vinegar obviously is an acid. But, vinegar is not just an acid, it's an acid in water. Because water in vinegar acts as a host where the base and acid can react together. And during this reaction, baking soda is mixed with the vinegar and it takes a proton from the vinegar and causes baking soda to transform into the water and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas that is being released during this reaction and gives the bubbling effect, which of course expands and inflates the balloon. Of course, you can give a more technical explanation for the chemical process for all their students. Now, an interesting fact for anyone with a sweet tooth is that this reaction is what makes cakes rise and get all fluffy. And now for our final experiment of the day, we will have Giorgio Strungos who will share his enthusiasm for Christmas, but with the rocket. Thanks for being in Scientix TV. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, Christmas is coming and uh, what is more fun than uh, science experiments uh, before holidays, especially when they are uh, related to students' most favorite uh, subject, rocketry. Uh, this is a very simple experiment. All we need is a Christmas paper cup, some alcohol, uh, a plastic bottle, uh, lighter and uh, some uh, confetti. Uh, the steps are very easy, but uh, we advise uh, students to do this experiment uh, with adult uh, supervision. And now we are ready uh, to start. For the preparation of the experiment, we have to open a small hole near the bottom of the uh, bottle, uh, approximately five millimeters uh, wide. And we spray some alcohol inside the bottle about 10 times. We shake the bottle to evaporate, to more evaporate the alcohol. And we place the cup upside down on the bottle. Finally, we put some confetti at the top and we are ready. Uh, we will light the fire close to the hole. Uh, three, two, one, ignition. Uh, 
This happens because when the alcohol uh, is burned, the combustion gases are uh, vented through the holes uh, of the bottle and pushes the, and forces the cup to fly like a rocket. That was a very fun paper cup rocket, do you agree? That, that was a lots of fun. And speaking of fun, we have some bloopers for you. So yes, we, were, we did a bit of digging and we made sure that we were dressed the same. Well done. It'll be first come out, it'll be blah, 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 We, we not one, one of the, way blah, 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 Did you forget already? <laughs> we need that. <laughs> this is happening. And, what are you doing? <laughs> Will you stop with the balloon? <laughs> Thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure to host Scientix TV for another year. We do look forward to a 2024 with a lot more interesting resources, fun experiments, and looking at the world through STEM glasses. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you, See you next, next year. year.